need, and also perhaps a dedication of some kind uh, to remedy that mistake in any way possible. In other words, the individual is born into this life, again through the gate of cancer, not just simply as a brand new little infant, but as a person or a being that has learned something by an after-death cycle, and that this learning must be incorporated into the new embodiment. This learning must become part of what is brought forward into the new incarnation. And it is the nature of things that each incarnation should be a little improvement over the one that came before. <coughs> so we have the inter inter uh, interval uh, bringing the person back with a personality, with an integration of their own. Each of individual is the sum of his own mistakes and also the sum of his, sum of his own accomplishments. He comes back midstream in a great cycle of unfoldment. He comes forward with various degrees of achievement. And very often the more advanced his degrees of achievement, the more simple his life will be here. Wise people do not wish to burden themselves with those excesses which contribute to temptation and misery. Therefore, those who have a deep understanding will probably live a simple life. But they will also have certain experiences which they will f confront again. If, if necessary, they will be placed in a difficult family situation which they must solve because they didn't solve it before. Another one may find uh, heavy emphasis upon honesty because he has corrected, because he has not corrected his dishonesty in a previous life. Appetites also have very strong karmic consequences, <coughs> and moral delinquencies are punished seriously. The individual must gradually uh, realize that these punishments are in himself, that he wanted them, he needed them, he had to have them, but the moment he is embodied, he doesn't want them. So it is only between incarnations that he really gets a good look at himself. That is the time when the facts of life are most evident and normally available to him. And all these facts that, that, that apply to him are within the pattern of his own existence. He is not responsible to the patterns of other people. He is not responsible for anything except his own relationship with truth and relationship which he is gradually building. As he goes further and further in this structural development, he will find out finally what his purpose is. And he will probably discover what the Egyptians decided it was, namely that in due time this person will be in fact the very thing which is now his miniature existence. He will become a sun. He will become a great center of light. He will be a center of light in his family sometime. He will be a center of light in his country. He will be a center of light in the world and become one of the great teachers of mankind. And then he will go on beyond this. He will be go on into the consciousness of planets and suns and space. He will, go, he will be growing forever until in each of us the entire universal purpose is fulfilled. Therefore, the uh, daily journey and the time it takes is a very inconsiderable thing. We will find as we go along that uh, the journey that we are really making goes on for hundreds of lives. It goes on but never twice the same. We never pay for something we didn't do. We never fail to get the reward of what we have done well. But these rewards are in terms of soul growth not in terms of material circumstances. And as the individual goes further and further into the mystery of the soul world, or the world of soul, he will find that his citizenship there is far more important than his success or failures in this life. But we are all getting a little better. We are all growing. Sometimes a bad mistake is one of the most powerful forces for growth, because it suddenly brings us face to face with ourselves. We find that uh, 
things like uh, alcoholism, narcotics addictions, and things of this nature become a great burden upon the soul. But the soul learns to uh, overcome them, and in the overcoming it gains a strength otherwise impossible to it. So everywhere, every time, always, the growth is going on to the best of the ability of the human being to perform growth. So in this way, the sun becomes a kind of master plan, which by coming around each time begins to bring a cycle of experiences to nature. Each year the sun comes back to the world. Each year the world is just a little different. Each year the sun performs a slightly different service, and over the period of ages these services vary greatly. But in all cases, nature continues to produce this solar cycle, the sun in order that it may fulfill its own purpose. The sun is the cleanser, the purifier, the illuminator. And it will come every time to, to carry on this particular task. Sometimes it will find a dark world waiting for it, heavily burdened with its own errors. Sometimes it will come to a better world where things seem right, but always the sun in its cycle is working towards the one great end, and that great end, of course, is the final illumination of all that exists, that all things in themselves and by themselves and for themselves shall be fulfilled, or be perfect in their needs and in their operations. Thus we can find in the old sacred books how often the sun deities are called thy names that are more or less solar. How we find in every mythology the legend of the dying God. We find forever the mystery of the resurrection through dedication. And we also learn that in this world, gradually, happiness and security come from inward disciplines and dedications that the individual who disciplines life to the best of his ability is gaining ground. The individual who is gradually weeding out his own selfishness, is gradually correcting his own intensities, who is gaining control of his emotions, and who is no longer able to injure others merely to the satisfaction of his own temperament. As these factors fade out and his life is smoothed out as a quiet, gentle, growing towards reality. If it does this and we are able to make it work in this way, we will find that every life at the time has its importance. Now, uh, those who are already part way through one of, one of these lives, as we all are, uh, has, has much to be grateful for. Many people between the middle life and the terminal years do go through a certain period of mental a reorganization. Uh, Carl Jung, the psychiatrist, makes special notice of this. How people gradually, as they get older, become more and more aware of the universal and less and less bound to the local situations of living. Little by little, we get rid of the things that we don't need. We pass on to others what they want and we no longer want. And it becomes more and more obvious that for the long journey it is best to travel light. And uh, therefore we dispose of ballast. We do not want it, because gradually we find that the things we love the most uh, are not going to be permanent. We're going not to have them anyway, so we find ways of getting rid of them. But while the, that is true, that inside of ourselves, which is permanent growth, becomes more obvious every day. Permanent growth makes us happier, richer, and better equipped for the great cycles of life that lie before us. And actually, every time we come into the world, the sun moves northward and brings to us opportunities for growth. But most of all, the light, which is the internal and invisible sun, is bringing to ripeness and to fulfillment the harvest of pressures, powers, and, and, and values locked within ourselves. As the sun produces the symbol of the sprouting of the seed, 
so the light within ourselves produces the ripening of all the inner values of consciousness. And the sun which brings the harvest to the earth, it brings as a light to the mind and hearts of human beings so that they may too have the harvest of their years and have a great and <coughs> wonderful future. It all works out, and I think the vision of it as it was sensed and held and believed by the ancients is kind of worthwhile to give a little thought to at this season of the year. Thank you very much.